In this video, I will show you the operation of an I square L integrated injection logic inverter gate. If we have an inverter gate, if at the input I apply logic 0, in the output I will get logic 1. If at the input I apply logic 1, in the output I will get logic 0 in case of a inverter or NOD gate. This is the circuit structure of an integrated injection logic inverter circuit. Here you will see the circuit will use two transistors Q1 and Q2 and you will see the current source I1 will inject current at the base terminal of the transistor Q1 and the current source I2 will inject this current into the base terminal of the transistor Q2. That's why this I square L logic is sometimes known as current steering or current injection logic. Okay, now let me describe the circuit structure of this inverter gate. You see at the base terminal of the transistor Q1 I will apply our logical input here the logical input VI when I will talk about VI equal to lo at logic 0 that means I will connect this terminal to our ground terminal that means this will be equal to 0 volt when I will talk about logic 1 I will apply only 0 0.8 volt between this terminal to ground terminal okay because the noise margin of an I square L gate is a very small quantity and you see the collector of this transistor Q1 will be connected to the base terminal of the transistor Q2 and I will take the output across this terminal the collector terminal of the transistor Q1 and the ground terminal the collector to emitter terminal voltage of the transistor Q1 equal to let's say VCE1 okay and this VCE1 will be equal to the base to emitter junction voltage of the transistor Q2 because they will be connected in parallel with respect to this terminal to ground terminal so I can write VCE1 will be equal to VBE2 okay now let me describe the logical operation of the I square L inverter circuit so at first I will talk about when the input will be at logic 0 input will be at logic 0 that means I will apply only 0 volt that means this terminal will be directly grounded when this terminal will be grounded you will see at the base terminal of the transistor Q1 has a voltage of 0 volt so our transistor Q1 will be in off state because to because to turn on a transistor we need a voltage greater than 0 0.7 volt at the base terminal of the transistor Q1 here it is 0 volt so it will be in off state when this transistor Q1 will be in off state its collector and emitter terminal will act like an open switch therefore I can disconnect the collector and emitter terminal from the given circuit therefore you will see the collector current of the transistor Q1 IC1 will be equal to 0 ampere as the collector current will be 0 you will see there will be no emitter current as the emitter current IE will be equal to 0 we get the emitter current IE equal to sum of base current and collector current here this IC is 0 this IE is 0 that means this IB will also be equal to 0 that means this IB 1 is equal to 0 therefore you will see the current that is injected by this current source I1 at this terminal will be following this path that means this path will act like a sink or current sink for the current source I1 now see as the collector current IC1 will be equal to 0 you will see the current that is injected at the base terminal of the transistor Q2 will flow in this direction and IB2 will be equal to I2 therefore you will see our transistor Q2 will be in on state or in saturation when it will be in on state or saturation you will see its collector and emitter terminal will act like closed switch therefore I can short the collector and emitter terminal see our transistor Q2 is in on state or in saturation now my question is when a transistor goes into saturation when its base to emitter junction voltage is greater than 0 0.7 volt okay greater than 0 0.7 volt let's say that as the transistor Q2 is in saturation the base to emitter terminal voltage is 0 0.8 volt and you will see I am considering the output voltage across this terminal to ground terminal this same terminal is the base terminal of the transistor Q2 and this ground terminal is the emitter terminal of the transistor Q2 so I can say that when our input will be at logic 0 or base to emitter 
junction voltage of the transistor q2 will be vbe2 will be our output voltage which will be 0.8 volt in case of i square l circuit this 0.8 volt will indicate logic 1 now let me describe the second case of logic when vi is at logic 1 logic 1 that means i will apply 0.8 volt between this terminal to ground terminal 0.8 volt that means this terminal will be positive and this terminal will be negative see this 0.8 volt will be applied between the base to emitter terminal of the transistor q1 as the base to emitter terminal voltage is greater than 0.7 volt therefore our transistor q1 will be in on state or in saturation and when a transistor is in on state or in saturation its collector and emitter terminals act like closed switch therefore i can short the collector and emitter terminal therefore you will see there will be a total short circuit between this collector to emitter terminal therefore vce1 will be equal to zero volt see this vce1 will be equal to vbe2 so vbe2 will also be zero volt vbe2 equal to zero volt that means the transistor q2 is in off state as the voltage is less than 0.7 volt so the transistor q2 will be in off state and i can disconnect the collector and emitter terminal of the transistor q2 as it is acting like an open switch so the collector current ic2 will be equal to zero as a result ie2 will be equal to zero see as our collector current ic2 equal to zero and our emitter current ie2 equal to zero therefore our base current of this transistor will be equal to zero because emitter current equal to sum of collector current and base current so this terminal will draw no current from this source therefore you will see this i2 will flow through this path up to this ground terminal because current flows through low resistance path therefore as i2 will be flowing through this path our collector current ic1 will be equal to i2 as the collector and emitter terminal are shorted therefore you will see our ic1 will be equal to i2 Th this will be equal to nearly our emitter current ie1 now let me talk about the output state here you will see as this terminal and this terminal is directly shorted therefore vce1 equal to zero and our output voltage vo is equal to vce1 therefore our output voltage will be zero volt which indicates logic zero for the input of logic one when i will apply logic one at the input you will see the base current of the transistor q1 will draw current from the current source i1 and the voltage source v i therefore i can write i v1 equal to i i plus i 1 okay that's it this is the operation of i square l inverter circuit